Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting problem. I don't think anybody has made a video on this problem before. If they did, please let me know. You can share the link, but I doubt it. Anyways, we have ln x over ln x over ln x, so on and so forth. This goes on forever. And we're going to find an expression for this. Or in other words, we're going to simplify and find the answer in terms of x. Is there a simpler answer? Absolutely. This is kind of like an infinite fraction, I'd like to say, but it's also a logarithmic expression. You get the idea? ln of x being divided by ln of x, but that x is also being divided by ln x and so on and so forth. Now, to be able to solve this problem, obviously we're going to have to make some assumptions. Uh, suppose this converges and see if you can find a case for which this doesn't. And please share with us in the comment section down below. But to be able to solve this, first of all, with most of the time with these kinds of infinite expressions, like infinite radicals, infinite fractions, we set the whole thing equal to a variable, another variable. How about using t in this case? If the whole thing is called t, notice that this expression contains itself infinitely many times, right? If we just focus on the denominator of this argument of ln function, x is the numerator and the denominator is ln x over ln x over dot dot dot. Yes, it's the same thing as t. Make sense? Okay. So then we can go ahead and set that equal to t as well after you know setting the whole thing equal to t. And obviously you could keep doing this. This is also t, but we don't really need to worry about it because we got what we needed. Well, our idea, well, our, our goal here is to solve for this expression, or I shouldn't say solve, I guess it's kind of like simplifying. So the answer is supposed to be in terms of x. Don't forget that, okay? t is just a temporary dummy variable. So now, what does this imply? Now the whole thing kind of collapses into a single variable and we get ln x over t equals t. A quick break because I want to show you the result from Wolfram Alpha. What do you think Wolfram Alpha is going to give you for this expression? Is it able to simplify it? And unfortunately, no. It just interprets it as a single ln. It's kind of funny because a lot of times when you type in ln, it's going to turn it into a log because Wolfram Alpha thinks, as many other people, that natural log is log. Anyways, so, I can't find it, but we can find it. That means we're smarter than Wolfram Alpha. Okay, let's pick it up from here. ln x over t equals t. All right, awesome. So, from here, we're going to try to find t because the expression we're trying to simplify is equivalent to t. So, if you can find t in terms of x, we're going to be good. Makes sense? So, this problem now turns into kind of like an equation. Solve for t in terms of x. The problem is you have t on both sides and you have the log to make matters worse and x is divided by that. But don't worry, this is solvable. And you'll probably be surprised at the result if you're not even at this point. Okay, so let's wait and see what happens. First of all, I want to kind of, you know, uh, get rid of the ln and turn it into an exponential because exponentials are easier to work with. Let's do the following, e to the power of both sides. What does that mean? You put e on both sides and then just place the exponents, ln x over t equals t. Therefore, e to the power of those are also equal. Make sense? Now, e to the power of ln something is going to be something, so it's going to be x over t, and this is just e to the power t. Great, right? Remember, we were trying to solve for t. Wait a minute, this doesn't work. It gives us x in terms of t. It doesn't give us t in terms of x, but don't worry, we'll get there. Here is the next step. Cross multiplication, you get x equals t e to the t. At this point, take a deep breath and think about it. Haven't you seen this before? Oh, come on, we've done quite a few videos on that. And we need to find t from here. Does that look familiar? It should, right? Yes. If you said Lambert's W function, you got it. So that's what we're going to use because what happens is if you have uh, t e to the t and you use Lambert's W on that, you'll get t from there. So in other words, if you w both sides, then you're going to get t from here. Remember, 
if you define a function f of t as t to the t, its inverse basically is going to be like this, right? And it's going to give you t. So it's going to be the input for the inverse function. And f inverse is actually called Lambert's w function. So in other words, Lambert's w function, and I know a lot of people asked for clarification, so let me spend a, you know, a few seconds on this. Lambert's w function is a very special function which takes t e to the t as an input and returns t as an output. So it kind of extracts, it's also called the product log because the inverse of the log function is e to the power something, but this is a product, so they called it product log. That's how you can input into Wolfram Alpha. But the problem is this is a multi-valued function, so depending on the interval, you're going to get sometimes more than one solution. But let's just avoid all those complexities, all those issues, and let's just focus on this. So W T e to the T is going to equal T. This whole thing is T. Isn't that amazing? Remember, we were trying to solve for T in terms of X, and we got it. T is equal to Lambert's W of X. And that's just the answer. Make sense? Okay, so you can kind of test it out, obviously. If you go ahead and plug it in, and hopefully you'll find something. But again, that's a lot of iterations and infinitely many times you have to do it. But that's basically what the answer is going to be. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.